to all of you watching this video, I'm Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me. I'm looking here a bit of a repeat topic. It was brought up in a specific comment section. I presented a video not too long ago or perhaps a little bit distance back, triangular pyramid volume. Where in that video using integral calculus, we came up with this formula for a triangular pyramid. 1 over 4 root 3 b square h. But we know in terms of geometry in high school, what we are initially introduced to for these triangular pyramids, the volume is 1 or 3 base and height. The question which was brought up in the comment section is how can you reconcile the two because in that video, I verbally said that they can be reconciled but I never showed their reconciliation. In this video, we're going to show you that reconciliation. For those people who have not watched that video, you have to understand how this formula comes about using integral calculus. I will include the tag for that video and I will literally breeze through this derivation for this. Then we will spend some time on the reconciliation. When we're talking about a triangular pyramid, you know we're looking at something like this, a triangular pyramid which has a triangular base. When you're looking at this one or three base times height, this right here, if you were to look at this triangle right here in the base, which serves as the base of this triangle, you calculate this area and then from the base, the center base of this, all the way up to the top, the height. You do one or three times the area of this base times height. And that gives you the traditional volume of this pyramid, but we also have this formula right here as well. And we'll show you the derivation of this and we'll reconcile it with this. So it's a very important video and it should bring for us a bit of a closure on this topic of this triangular pyramid volume. So let's get right into it. To the integral calculus procedure, if you were to just take a little triangle and pluck it out. You're looking at a triangle which looks like this. This triangle, and we are assuming from a very reasonable perspective that we're looking here in terms of a base at a regular triangular base. So you have basically a base over here which would have 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees, an equilateral triangular base so that all these cross sections are equilateral triangles. They could very well be isosceles triangles but we're focusing here on equilateral triangular cross-sectional slices. If you were to take the area of this and you were to integrate it, you could integrate it from a zero all the way up to this height. You can very well do that. And this specific area of this cross-sectional slice going from here, large slices narrowing out to small slices, you would get the volume formula which we will bring out with integral calculus and then we will reconcile it with that. Each of these cross-sectional slices you have, have a certain side, each of these sides, because we're talking about equilateral triangular slices, they're all equal to each other. We have to determine the dimension of this side, which somehow includes the fact that the slices are large here towards the base and then they narrow out towards the apex. And you can do that by means of a good ratio. If this right here represents a certain base, this represents the side S right there. We have a certain distance here from the top, the apex, which is X. Then we have a certain distance here, we'll call that an H. You see how we have proportional items? small height, small base, full height, full base, you can do a good ratio over here and you can solve for that S. You'll have SH is equal to XB and S is equal to XB over H. Each of these is equal to an X times B over H and that's something we have to remember. We have to determine the area of that specific slice. All of these cross-sectional slices are added up by means of integral calculation from zero to H and you get your volume. Let's blow up that little triangle we have right over there. Each of these sides is an X, B over H. You can bisect it, make two right triangles. If this right here is an X, B over H, then in terms of a half, it's an X, B over two H. I'm looking at this height of this slice and I'm calling that a Y and I need to know that. I have an A square plus B square is equal to C square. Remember everything I'm showing you over here, I've put it in that video. All of this square plus y square is equal to xb over h square. I'm solving for y. y square is equal to x square b square over h square minus x square b square over 4h square. y is equal to this. This is just like a 1 minus a 1 over 4. You'll get a 3 over 4 x square b square over h square and then you're going to do a root of that because we're solving for y. Not y square but y. When you do that, what do you get? You get here, these perfect squares come out. You get an XB over 2H root 3. What does this Y represent? It represents the height of this slice. The height of this specific triangle which has been obtained from that slice. Now let me erase this. Remember again, I'm telling you everything I've put over here, I've 
put in a more elaborate format in the previous video. This slice has a certain area which is half base and height. I know there's a half from the triangle area formula. I know there's a height which is this y. And this is xb over 2h root 3 and I know there's a base. Each of these bases is an s but that s is an xb over h. What can we get when we do all of this? This is all our area with regards to x. Let's combine everything. We'll have an x square b square root 3 over 4h square is equal to area with regards to x. Now we just have to integrate that and let me integrate it for you. The volume by the integral calculus procedure is equal to this area slice being integrated and I'm leaving space over here and I'll show you why. From 0 up to h. 0 all the way up to h. The base to the apex of that. Why did I leave this? Because I'm going to bring out the constants or the coefficients. I'm going to bring out a b square root 3 and 4 h square. b square root 3 over 4 h square. x square will stay in because everything is with regards to x. When you do the integration of this, it's not hard. You're doing an x cube over 3. Let me erase it and bring that for you. We get an x cube over 3. And you know that we're looking at it from h and 0. And we can erase this right over here. When we bring in the h, the 0, the 0 is meaningless, you do the difference of the 2. You end up getting from here an h cube over 3, which I'm bringing right here, h cube over 3. And I'm going to erase this for you. Remember, everything is in that previous video. The tag will be included to that video in this video. You can simplify all of this. When you simplify all of this, I'm going to do a 1 over 4 root 3. I'm bringing the 4 and the root 3 together. I have a b square here on the top and I have an h cube and an h square which simplifies to just this. So I end up getting a volume with regards to this x is a 1 over 4 root 3 b square h or let's write it in a better way b square h over 4 root 3. And here it is. The volume derived by integral calculus procedure where you're taking each of these cross sectional slices you're adding their areas. In terms of integral calculus from the base 0 all the way to height, the cumulative effect of all of that is this. But I'm telling you this right here is equal to that. It is equal to that and I have to show you why it is. Remember this right here is integral calculus procedure, this area of x. All of this represents the area of these type of cross-sectional slices which are being added up. When you're looking at that formula over there, which is the formula you learn in geometry in high school, that capital B represents the area of this base this base right here. So we have to determine the area of that base and I want to do that for you because that's part of the reconciliation procedure. And let me write this here. Volume with regards to x via integral calculus I got b square h over 4 root 3. We have to reconcile both of these. Reconcile means that they're equal to each other and let's do that. The reconciliation procedure begins in this way. You have one formula derived from integral calculus. Remember they're both the same formulas but they're presented in a slightly different way. The same concept being presented in two different ways. The integral calculus formula is equal to that. And we do reconciliation. You do reconciliation here by solving for this right here, capital B. You take everything on the other side. You have a 3B square H over 4 root 3H. You see the H went down and the 3 went up. Is equal to B. Simplify these things. The H's cancel out. I might as well just erase them out because they canceled out. When I have a root 3 here and I have a 3 over here, I can cancel this root 3 and I can bring it right over here. So I know now that the area of this base over here is equal to root 3 b square over 4. If I can show you that it indeed is the case, then we can make this fact prove true and we can prove it to be true. Let me show you why this base of this triangular pyramid is what I'm telling you it is. I'm telling you it's root 3 b square over 4. And I told you earlier on, we're looking here, at something which is a equilateral triangle in terms of its base therefore all the slices are equilateral triangles what do we mean by that each of these is a 60 60 60 triangle if you take the 60 60 60 and you bisect it right over here you've generated a 30 here and you've generated a 30 here and you know you got your two right angles over there you've generated this we can call this a b over here instead of calling it an s we're calling it a b everywhere all around each of these is a b but this has been split into b over 2 and b over 2. This triangle here has a certain height, it has a certain base. Here's my base and this right here, this bisecting line is my height. I want to look for that value or the dimension of that height. Why can't I just use simple trigonometry? I can. 
If I am thinking about a 30, 60, 90, 30, 60, 90 triangles have a 1 root 3 to trigonometric ratios. B over here is associated with a ratio 2, whereas a H over here is associated and opposing a 60 degree, therefore it's associated with a root 3. You solve here for H, you have a root 3 B over 2 is equal to H. We've determined the height only. But we also know what the base is. The base of this triangle is just a B. We know that the area of this base of this pyramid is given by the formula half base times height. We have a half. Base is just the letter B because each of these sides is indeed a B. And now we have a height which is a root 3 B over 2. You have to consolidate all of this. When you consolidate all of this you know the area of that base of that triangle which is also equivalent to this capital B, which we're looking at right here, is equal to B square root 3 over 4. B square root 3 over 4, and I've shown you that. The area of the base is equal to this capital B from that formula. Now we know that this capital B is equal to the base of that triangular pyramid and B square root 3 over 4. We put everything here into this formula. Volume is equal to 1 over 3, the base times the height. I know 1 over 3 is 1 over 3 and I know b is b square root 3 over 4 and I know what the height is. The height in terms of your entire pyramid is just h. When you combine all of this you get this. You get a b square root 3 h over and I'm going to keep 3 and 4 separate. The h stays as is but this root 3 on the top is going to cancel out with this here 3 in the denominator and make it a root 3. When you clean this up, you get a b square h over 4 root 3. And that's exactly what I determined and obtained from the integral calculus procedure using these cross-sectional slices. And now we've done the reconciliation. So indeed, b square h divided by 4 root 3 is equal to 1 over 3 bh. Except here you're looking at the base of your entire triangular pyramid and you're multiplying by 1 over 3 and h. Here you're doing everything with regards to the cumulative effect of cross-sectional slices from the base all the way to the apex. But the formulas, in terms of volumes, both of those are equivalent. They're identical to each other. They're just two different ways of representing the same concept. And that right there brings us to the closure of this video. If there are indeed any concerns, please leave them in the comment section and I'll get back to you. Thank you. Have a nice day.